Hi, this is David. Today we're talking about GitHub Copilot. GitHub Copilot is a tool that will help you when you're writing your code. It works in a lot of different languages, a lot of different frameworks, and it plugs into a lot of different integrated development environments, IDEs, such as Visual Studio Code. Now, if I'm subscribed to GitHub Copilot, then I can use Visual Studio Code with an extension to help me write this code. If I go down to the extensions right here and search for GitHub Copilot, you can see here it is right here. I've already installed it here, but if you want to look for the one GitHub Copilot from github.com. Make sure that it's installed and now VS Code knows about Copilot and it can help you write code. I am going to start with a PowerShell demonstration, uh, mostly because I'm not that familiar with PowerShell, so I don't use it a lot. And so GitHub Copilot would be really helpful for me. I've got a file here called demo.ps1. PS1 is the default extension for PowerShell. And I'm just going to start typing in some code. Dollar sign Jan equals one. I'm assigning the number one to a variable called Jan. Uh, and then I'll type dollar sign Feb equals two. And now it's Copilot has figured out a pattern. It sees, oh, I've got a month equals a number and they both seem to be in sequence. So if I, it says up here that I can accept by pressing the tab key, let's do that. Tab and go there and then April equals four, May equals five and so on. It's just writing code for me. All I'm doing is pressing tab and then enter. So it goes from grayed out, meaning it's a suggestion. I press tab, it's now actually typed in to this and I'll do this for all 12 months of the year. And this is pretty good, but why don't I instead, you can see it's still suggesting other things as well. Let me just hit enter right here to see what's going on. It's incrementing months by one at a time. I don't think I want to do that. Instead, I'd like to create, instead of having 12 variables, maybe a single hash table with 12 elements. That might be useful. So I could put a comment in here and say something like uh, create, a hash table with months and their corresponding numbers. All right, right here. And there it is, it's all grayed out, so suggestion. As soon as I press tab, then it becomes actual code that's typed in here. Pretty nice. And if I press enter down here, you can see access the hash tables, suggesting some other things that writing out, for example, what's the value of the month of January, the month of February and so on. I don't think I want all those here, so I'll go on down here. Um, and this is all pretty good, but let me let me delete this and I'll do something that's a little more practical to my job uh, that uh, I'm going to work with Azure. So I'll just put in a comment here. It says log into Azure. How about that? And AZ login. I could have looked that up, but here it is typed up for you. In fact, you can see there's one of two samples. I could use that one or I could use connect AZ account. Either one will work. I'll use this one right here. I'll accept it by pressing tab right there. And then it's actually suggesting, well, maybe the next thing I want to do is create a resource group. All right, let's 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 take that comment. And there's the code for creating a resource group. Maybe I want to uh, get, create a virtual machine. Sure, why not? There's the code for creating a virtual machine. And you notice that it, it made assumptions in here. I said, create a resource group. It made up a name for the resource group. It put it in the East US. That might not be what I want. I could go and edit it, edit it after the fact. Um, either to correct a mistake that it made, because remember, it's not 100% always accurate. It's you're the, still the pilot. It's just the co-pilot. Or maybe I want to be more explicit about this. So why don't I do this? I'll say get rid of that and say create a resource group named GCastRG in, oops, in the West US location. Let's do that. And now, because I gave it that information, it's a bit more deliberate about what it's going to create, things like that. Um, if I want to do something like, oh, look at this, open port. I like this. This is a pretty good suggestion. It's open port 80. There's the code open port 80 to allow trust. Show the details of the VM. These are all pretty good things. Maybe I want to uh, get the current subscription. It knows I'm talking about an Azure subscription here, and there it is. That's the code to do that. 
Another way you can access GitHub Copilot is using this little star thing here. Just click on that and a dialog box opens up and you can put my comment in here. So just say something like uh, before we created the resource group just explicitly, but that would fail if that group name already exists. Maybe I want to say create a resource group only if the group does not already exist. That seems like a little bit safer. Fetching the response. And you can see it typed up some code here. It said, here's the group name right here. And if not existing group, then we'll create it. All those. We'll do a little bit of safety here. I can select discard. I can say accept. I can actually click regenerate. Maybe I don't like what it did right here. I want a different one. Uh, but I'll click accept and do that. I've got a little bit safer one right here. Maybe I want to call that one GCast RG2 instead of GCast RG like this. So that's another way of accessing it. Uh, and finally, we have this section down here, chat GitHub Copilot. And that is also, I could also type in some comment right here, but it has some special commands in here that I can access just by using slash. And in slash right here, I can, for example, highlight, let me highlight all this code first. Right here. And do slash tests. And by adding that, then it can generate a bunch of tests for me to, to automate a test that will test this code and validate it. So I put it here in this chat window like this. And I'll just grab all these. Let's wait till it finishes. Here's a little warning here that these are tests are quite basic and don't cover everything. But they will get you started. They'll get you quite a ways there. So what I'm going to do, I can expand this and make it a easy, little easier. That's about as big as it gets. And copy all of this stuff here. Control C, come down to the bottom here. Or maybe I want to add another file, call it demo.p, demo-tests.ps1. And in here, it's using this Hester module here to mocking out Azure. And then there's some tests right here. And again, they, they might not be perfect. Maybe you want to tweak them, but they got me a, they're a good start for writing tests. And I don't need to go down to this section here to do the command. I can also do the same thing from right click here, copilot, start inline chat. And there's even a few shortcuts right here. Let me do this. Let me go up to the demo PS1 and I'll explain I'll highlight the whole thing here and then just right click, say Copilot, explain this. And you can see that it's creating some text here, some English language text using its power of the large language model. It's telling me exactly what this code does. This would be really useful if you were to inherit someone else's code or you wanted documentation for your code, anything like that right here you could copy this and paste it into your documentation into a readme file maybe something like that or maybe just read it just so you understand someone else's code a little bit better and finally i just want to show you that if i right click on here and say copilot there are these things here explain this fix this generate docs they're all they're also available inside of this chat window if i hit the slash or sorry the forward slash right here i get the same options right here to do this. So for example, fix this is one. And if I, for example, had a typo in here, right? Misspelled create. Then I could copilot fix this and hopefully it'll be smart enough to say, all right, I would correct the typo in AZ group create and it'll tell me how it's going to fix it. It got rid of that extra T. And if I didn't like that, I could regenerate it right here. But it came up with the same thing. That's a pretty clear typo. I'll accept that and it fixes it right here. So we've got a lot of op options about how we're going to access it, access GitHub Copilot. But the bottom line is it's going to cr either create code, enhance your code, correct your code. Um, and always keep in mind it is the Copilot. You're in charge. It, it, you always want to double check this. 
In this video, I've shown you how to use GitHub Copilot to work with a PowerShell script, create some tests, write some code, and document that code. This is David. Thank you for watching. Thank you.